hello and welcome to a spooky episode of the Illegal Pancakes podcast. The only podcast that has the same name as us and has this intro featuring us. So, like we said earlier this month, we decided we would do a like, Halloween recommendation special. And one of the movies we had recommended to us by none other than Ty Andrew, who actually I don't think that's his last name anymore. He changed it to something else. But to my old friend Ty, uh, he recommended the movie Pet Cemetery, the 1989 Stephen King classic. So I think he talked about in his post that he said something along the lines of like, this was the first movie that like his mom walked out of and stuff. And we, we decided we would watch it and we're going to talk about it too. Yep. Uh, before we, sorry, I should probably say that I think this is the first Stephen King movie I've actually like sat down and watched, <laughs> which is just kind of weird, all things considered. <laughs> yeah, no, for me, this is probably the third. Uh, actually, technically the second. So I've seen the I've seen Stanley Kubrick's Shining, but that's more of a Stanley Kubrick film than it is a Stephen King one. Let's be honest. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and then I've seen. Shawshank Redemption, but that is more of like a drama than it is like a horror film. So yeah, like I've seen, yeah. I've seen a good portion of The Green Mile, but again, that's not really a uh, horror movie. No. All right, but uh, yeah. So if there's any big Stephen King fans listening in, let us know if this is a good starter or not. <laughs> now here, here is the thing though. So I mean, though I'm not super well versed with Stephen King. Uh, a few years ago, I think it was actually my freshman year of college, I was, for one of my English classes, I was reading some different, uh, like, uh, articles that Stephen King had read. Well, not read, that he had written. I assume he read them as well, because he published them. But, uh, after that, it kind of got me interested, because I was like, wow, this guy actually is pretty talented for writing. And I kind of went through a phase of reading, like, about his different books on Wikipedia and stuff. So I was very familiar with the uh, premise and the story of Pet Cemetery going into this movie. But I had not actually seen the movie. Or, and I didn't know much about it either. I'd only heard that it was supposed to be really cheesy. And I knew the Ramones song, which is actually in the movie. I wasn't sure if it was just the Ramones cashing in on that song. Or if uh, it was for the movie. But yes, the Ramones song, Pet Cemetery, which is probably one of their better songs. Yeah. It, um, um, it's it, from the movie. Yeah, I think the reason why they did the song was because Stephen King's a big fan of theirs. Oh, is he? Yeah. No, out of boy Stephen King, I knew I knew you were a Ramones ha- fan by the length of your hair in the eighties. <laughs> yeah. Oh crap! I was gonna say something. So yeah, another thing about Stephen King, I guess, um, that I found out recently is that, well, he's from Maine, so a, a lot of his stories take place in the state of Maine. Um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of his stories are, are based off him, and even Pet Cemetery, like he's kind of the main character because he says it's a what if scenario of if his son got hit because there's a time that his son almost got ran over by a truck and he was kind of like i should write a book about if my son got ran over by a truck and then make a bunch of money (laughs) i don't know about that last part but he he did base it off a real life experience so in the tradition of stephen king it is a story that's slightly based on him yep and it also takes place in maine i think or Mm -hmm. everybody there has maine license plates i don't know (laughs) yeah I've never been to Maine. It's, I don't know if I ever will. It's, it's so far away and like, is there even anything in Maine? Lobsters. Well, no, they're, they're in the ocean. Yeah, they're in the ocean. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, oh crap. Let's see. So should we just, should we, should we just dive in to say what we thought about the movie? Yep. Okay, cool. So the thing was when, when I was watching the movie, I was about two thirds into the movie, and I was like, you know what? I don't see why everybody everybody hates this movie. This movie is actually it's it's kind of it's kind of cheesy. It feels a little low budget, but it feels fine. Like I don't have any issues with this movie. And then when the third act hits, that's when things kind of get out of control. <laughs> Maybe not even out of control, but I think that's the third act has the most problems. Yeah, I can kind of agree with you on that. Yeah, it was just. I mean, the movie has weird stuff in it the whole time. And I think that's one of the things that kind of works, kind of doesn't work, is that this movie just has has the balls to just do weird stuff. There's, like, weird ghost magic and stuff like that, and superpowers and visions and stuff, and it's just... 
yeah, bro, this is this is the Stephen King world, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Let me pull up my notes. <laughs> I have no notes. I Oh, I took a bunch of to notes for this one. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I don't know how long we wanted to make this and No, let's just let's just go. Yeah. Uh do we want to do spoilers? Should we should we just do spoilers or I suppose I should what what did you think about the movie? What were your thoughts? So yeah, I definitely agree with you on the um like the third act, everything falls falls apart, but um like the build up was pretty good to that point for the most mm. part. There are a couple like scenes that I'll talk about later that I don't think made that much sense or they kinda come out of nowhere and they mm. really serve no purpose or anything and then some other stuff's handled kinda weirdly. But, yeah, and I think I think part of that is because this is a book adaptation. Yeah. And the thing is with book adaptations, it's kinda hard to critique the movie because usually the best of the the best parts of the movie are taken from the book. So you can't really chalk that up to the director or the writing because it's taken from the book. Yeah. But there's also there's just some things that don't you can't translate everything from a book into a movie. And with that there's a couple sequences where I'm like, yeah, if this was written in a book this would be way more fleshed out and feel more real. But in the movie, they just feel kind of just tagged in there. And yeah. I think this movie is, is kind of it's kind of weakened by that. There's just some characters. I think you're specifically thinking about the uh, the the one lady with the stomach cramps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so like, I don't even know if she was actually in the book. I think that she was added for the movie. But like, uh, yeah, like, I feel like in a book, you'd be able to go into more detail on who she was and why she's committing suicide and stuff. Yeah. And it would add to like the themes and stuff in the movie, but in well, in the book, I should say, but in the movie, it's just kind of in there. It's not even really in there for shock value. It's just, it's just in there. Cause well, I, I don't know. It feels out of place. You're right. Yeah. Well, like the, the thing for me was, uh, the like five seconds they show her like suicide note on screen like my brain was kind of scrambled up because it was all written in cursive and yeah you know, I'm used I didn't I'm it. used to seeing like a uh, typed print so like I was mm-hmm. having like a idiot moment it's like oh I'm trying to read and then it, when I was able to process it finally it cut away it's like damn oh, it geez. It's like maybe <laughs> that would have helped a bit more if I had actually read it or yeah. paused it but I don't know it's still why? <laughs> mm-hmm. What purpose does this serve? I think it's just because it, one of the things about Stephen King, at least 80s Stephen King, was that he really liked to make people feel uncomfortable, I believe. Like, a lot of his books go really in-depth with gross and dark scenarios and stuff. And this this movie does that, too. Like, it's, it's a miserable story. Like, there's a lot of death and just stress and anxiety that happens in the movie. And I think that was the purpose of it was to add to it but it didn't it didn't need it you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah you take it out and the story is still pretty like stressful and stuff yeah all right so let's kind of go into spoiler territory mm-hmm. here kind of maybe do a yeah so if if you're interested go ahead and watch it i'd probably give this a 3.5 out of 10 i mean 3.5 out of 5 yeah. 7 out of 10 yeah, for me, some yeah, somewhere around there. It's definitely it's, seven. Uh, out of it's ten. free on YouTube. You can watch it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so go ahead if you want. If not, keep listening. Yeah. I don't know. I'm trying to think. Where, where where should we start? Where should we start? Okay. Uh, um, let me do a. Let me just do a brief like synopsis. Okay. So, okay. Pet Cemetery follows the Creed family who have recently moved to, I don't know, this house that's kind of out in the middle of nowhere in Maine. Mm-hmm. Um, it, the family consists of uh, Discount Ben Affleck and <laughs> Captain Marvel, and then they have two kids. One of them is named Gage, and he's like two, but he has a pretty impressive vocabulary. And, and then the other one's just a whiny little girl, and they have a cat as well. Yep. So, the big thing about where they decided to live is that it's, well, (laughs) it's right next to this really busy road that all these, uh, like, um, big old trucks come running down at, like, 80 miles per hour. Complete Mm -hmm. disregard for safety or whatnot. Man, just a bunch of douchey truckers that you can't stop. 
No. But also, there is a small path kind of leading from their yard that goes to a cemetery for, uh, like, the local children's pets. So here's, here's one thing that I have to critique Stephen King for. And maybe it's not like this in the book, okay? But uh, the old dude who's their neighbor... Creed. He's played by... No, not Creed. Yeah. That's crap. That's not... Judd. Name. Judd. Judd. That's his name. Judd. But he's played by the dad from the Monsters. Fun fact. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, he's the only recognizable actor in the movie. But uh, the sign says Pet Cemetery, and obviously it's spelled wrong. But he's like, oh, we've had this cemetery here since, like, the 70s. And I'm like, and you never thought to, like, change the sign? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you're going to go to show people to... You're not going to... You're not going to fix... You're not going to fix it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I should complain because, what is it? My one Marvelous Scene video, the title card had a like, typo on it. And, like, I left it on there for, like, almost a year. And there's a bunch of people commenting, like, why don't you change it? I'm just trying to help you. Like, that's improper grammar. It makes you look dumb. And I'm like, I'll change it once my Rodan video hits 500 views. Which it still hasn't, so go watch it. <laughs> yeah. But the Pet Cemetery really doesn't have anything to do with the story because what causes all the problems is like a mile away from the pet cemetery there's a native american sigil burial ground on top of a cliff <laughs> and again i haven't read the book but from what i remember on wikipedia i thought the burial ground was supposed to be like right next to the the pet cemetery yeah and that's like, that's what i there's this always big thought pile too. of like sticks and stuff they're like oh this is here to stop people from going in but it's like way far away there has to be like a hundred other entrances to that sigil place Mm. And also, they're they're climbing up it, and he's like, "Oh, you're gonna fall down and break your neck." It's not that high, and he does fall down, and it's like fine. <laughs> yeah, but no, that that's what I was thinking too, because I had always like, from what I understood, it was like the cemetery itself. That's what that's where mm -hmm. the animals came back. But nope, it's the uh, Native American thing on the top of the mountain. It's like a mile yeah. away. Huh. So yeah, that was that was a little weird, but it's not not a huge problem. So, one, okay, we're getting, do we want to do, like, a full plot recap, or, like, a somewhat full? Uh, let's, let's, let's do a quick one, but pretty okay. much, uh, what happens is, they're trying to move into their new town, uh, the dad, he's a doctor, he tries, there's some college student who gets hit by a truck, and the college student, like, comes back as a ghost and starts, like, talking to him and stuff, Yeah. and tells him not to go to the pet cemetery and stuff, and... Uh, don't go to the area beyond the trees. That's what it is. Yeah, don't like go the, beyond the trees. The big pile of sticks. But actually, sticks. you can go beyond the trees. It's fine. Just don't go up the quarry and on top of that cliff where that big sigil is. Yeah. But whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my nitpicking. But pretty much what happens is the family goes on vacation. The dad stays at home. The cat gets hit, so he decides to take the cat. The cat gets hit by a truck, I should say. He takes the cat, buries it there. It comes back. Is a zombie cat. And so in the movie, they're trying to make it that the cat has become like more feral and vicious because it's a zombie cat. But the, as someone who owns cats, Connor, how much more vicious are your normal cats at your house than the cat that they have? Uh. Here's, here's the thing. <laughs> my cat, my cat is, it's not the most tame cat in the world, but like you pick that thing up, it's going to scratch your face. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. That's just the way it has fun. So I'm like watching this and I'm like, hang on. This zombie cat is like nicer than my actual cat. <laughs> and that might be a bad thing. I might be a bad cat owner. Yeah. I don't know. Both of my parents' cats are indoor cats. So they're declawed in the front and they're a bit more okay. placid. Even the like more feral one, like he's like, he's not all scratchy and bitey. He, he just runs mm -hmm. away. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I, uh, it's, I, I don't know. It's like I expected a lot more from a zombie cat, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, I mean, the glowing eye effect is really cool. Yeah. That is one thing the movie does really well. But uh, a couple days pass by, and then the little boy, Gage, he gets hit by a truck. Okay. Now, here, here's, here's a big criticism of mine. And this kind of, well, it doesn't really spoil, like, the end of the film, but, like, they must have had the best mortician in the world because that kid was at like yeah bumper like, level like his head was at bumper level he would have the head burst. should have just came off yeah. and like the truck flips you can see like after <laughs> the shot like the truck is like on its side 
like what what happens <laughs> like yeah so the kid gets hit in the head with the truck his shoe flies off and the truck flips and then when they bring the kid back to life his face is totally fine like yeah except for like a scar going down like yeah, his forehead like, if they wanted, to, I don't know. I feel like if I was in charge of directing, I would have just had the truck hit the kid and just keep going. Like the trucker just didn't even notice, <laughs> just because I feel like that would have added to like the edginess and stuff of the story. Yeah. But uh, this movie has the best f bomb ever. After that, when the uh, dad is trying to go to bed and the cat is in bed and it's hissing at him, he's like, "F you." <laughs> yeah, I kind of, I almost missed that because it's yeah. like it's like so subtle almost. <laughs> And, like, the movie doesn't have much swearing. It's a very, like, soft R. Like, it's really only R for the blood. And, like we said, the college student comes back as a ghost. His brain is exposed. But yeah. Even then, it's not too bad. Mm. But the uh, the family goes on vacation again, but the dad stays behind. And the dad decides that he's going to take he's gonna take the kid and put him in the pet cemetery and bring him back so they can be a family again. Yeah. And this is where the movie starts to go downhill in my book. <laughs> yeah. So like after the cat had come back, the um the old guy Judd was kind of regretful mm-hmm. of like taking the dad there because he's like, "Oh yeah, the like the the burial grounds, they like need more bodies or something." Like wasn't that yeah, what what it was? Like I I think yeah, I'm I'm not sure how it works. It was either that when you bury something in the pet cemetery then it kills something off in your life. Yeah. But he's also regretful because he knows that the dad is going to try to bury the kid. And he's like, in World War II, somebody buried their son there. And he came back as this really autistic zombie. And they had to burn the whole house down. It was like, it was weird because like, there, there is a shot where it shows him like gnawing on somebody's legs. You're like, okay, he did eat someone. So you do come back as a zombie. But then like later when it has like the townsfolk come to burn down the house, the dad is like, no, son, sit on the couch. Be a good boy. No. And, like the kid is just acting just dude, just weird and awkward. I was like, what, what, what's happening? Apparently in the book what happens is that he comes back as like this really sassy, like immortal douchebag and it just starts like spreading all this gossip and like telling everybody's secrets and stuff because uh he's just he's just like a ghost person. Apparently if you come back as a ghost and you come back as like omnipotent. So like the townsfolk just get pissed off at him and like kill him. <laughs> Do they set his house on fire with they, his they dad do. inside, they, too? Yeah, so the, the dad kills his son because he's pissed off at him. <laughs> and then he burns down the house with himself inside. So, like, it's still in there. It wasn't all taken from Frankenstein. Jeez, it's like... But, yeah, okay, I was wondering why, like, they had to burn the house down. Can't you just, like, burn the guy? <laughs> yeah, it's just... <laughs> or, like, decapitate him? It's, like, deadite, maybe? <laughs> yeah, and here's here's another thing. Here's something else that I picked up. So, in the movie, Stephen King doesn't exist because we see him as the preacher at one of the funerals. Right. But the band, the Ramones, does exist because the trucker is listening to it when he runs over the kid. So, that would probably mean that the song Pet Cemetery exists in that universe with the Ramones, which means the Ramones, the band know about the pet cemetery in uh maine okay so instead of doing a remake a few years ago what they should have done was just made a movie about how the ramones found out about the pet cemetery (laughs) (laughs) i want to watch that Hmm. okay but so getting back to where i was going with this whole thing so the Mm -hmm. basically judd kind of figures out that the dad's probably gonna bury the kid up in the um, Native American bur- burial ground thing and uh, so I guess they de- it decides to sick the like uh, the toddler on him or whatnot. It's like the mm-hmm. toddler comes back, he immediately goes for his dad's medical bag, pulls out a yeah. scalpel and then goes to Judd's house mm-hmm. <laughs> Cuts him in the, in the spot that you don't want to get cut Yeah, in the... Um, Keely's so tending. here was the thing, like we said, when the baby comes back, his face is totally fu- like they don't put any makeup on the baby at all. Yeah, and like I get that you're working with an actual baby, so it has to be hard to do. But like the ghost college student has like so much makeup on him, and the makeup isn't anything like mind blowing, but like it still looks good. Like I feel like you could have made the kid look more like a zombie. 
But also the kid, again, he's he's a toddler, so he can't really act. But like he just seems too cute. Like you can't like, be, like when he's off screen, yeah, it's pretty scary because you just hear like creepy like laughter and him saying stuff. But like when he actually comes out, you're like, that's not scary. That's just a kid. And like there's a part where he goes and tries to eat Judd, and like I just I, I laugh <laughs> just because it was just like this little kid just like ah yum 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 like he looked like he was playing with them like. I want to know how they got him to actually like bite him on the neck there. No, I think they just told him just to, like go and pretend to like bite. Him. Maybe they put like a snack on there or something. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> yeah, like uh, they made the like the neck wound out of like Twizzlers or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, I have a note here. It says, "Gage, what the hell are you wearing?" So like, <laughs> did you see that too? There's like one of the shots where he comes out. He's wearing like. This stupid outfit. He has like a sailor hat on and like, well, not like a sailor hat. He's like a big straw hat on and like a blue, like, baggy shirt. You're talking about after he comes back as a zombie? Yeah, or? after he comes back as a zombie, he's wearing this stupid outfit. I think it's when he kills Judd. He's got this stupid outfit on. And then when he goes to kill his mom and dad, he's got a different outfit on. Yeah, it's like I remember him having like a suit. Well, yeah, because he probably yeah. got buried in one and then like a. Like a mm-hmm. hat that he probably found in the house. Yeah. But I don't remember that. Though. And then he also, he calls his dad on the phone. Now, like, I get that I wasn't the smartest kid out there on the street. But when I was a kid, I could not tell you my phone number to save my life. It wasn't until I was, like, I don't know, six that I learned my phone number. And this is back in the days of the old, like, dial phones. How did this two-year-old kid come back and, like, Call them on the phone. And they probably have a new phone number because they moved into a new house. I don't think in the 80s you could just keep your phone number. Yeah. Also, he ties a noose, which I'm not going to tell you if I know how to do or not. (laughs) So, while this is happening, here's another part that doesn't work. Uh, Short, short ghost, the college student, he's like guiding the mom back home. But here's the thing. Why? Because the ghost, the college student ghost is supposed to be a good guy. But, like, he's guiding the the mom back home, which just gets the mom killed. Like, it's not the dad's fault that the mom dies. It's that ghost's fault. Also, mm. the short shorts don't work. Yeah, but... And, like, it adds a weird comic relief. Like, there's a bunch of intense, like, scary stuff happening. And then it cuts back and, like, the zombie is, like, on, like, the plane. And he's, like, smiling and, like, doing the thumbs up and stuff. Yeah. So the thing was, that's kind of running like concurrently with the dad like planning to go bury the son. So mm-hmm. the idea is that the ghost is trying to get the mom back before he actually goes and do- does it. Yeah, and there's also a part where the car gets like a flat tire or something, and the ghost is like, oh, they're trying to stop us. Who's trying to stop them? Is there other ghosts that play here? Well, I mean, it, I, like the semi- or the like burial ground thing, I think that's what I it guess. was. So yeah. yeah, that's that's why I'm saying. I know it. in the book there's a character called the Wendigo, which is like this evil spirit that's kind of in charge of it. Yeah, so it's probably something like that. The same one that mm-hmm. kind of sent the the toddler after Judd. All right, here's another question: What the hell was that rock face that came out of the quarry? When the dad is walking up with the kid's body, he looks down in the water and like this. I don't know if it was Judd's face or not, but like all these rocks like fill this weird. They make this weird face. And they're like, don't do it. They had you an remember ex- that scene? Yeah, they had an extra couple grand that they didn't know what to do with, so they blew it on a cheap effect. Yeah, a cheap <laughs> jump scare, okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I, for, I forget whose face mm-hmm. that was. Yeah, so, so in the end, uh, the toddler kills the mom with yeah. a noose, and then the dad gets a needle... Puts the cat down, and then he goes and fights the kid in this little Chucky showdown. And <laughs> gives the kid a morphine overdose, which I guess kills him. But he had a good death. Well, the second time he died, it was pretty good, probably. No fair. I don't know. It's been a long time since... I've, yeah, he's like, oh, no fair. But, uh... So, it probably sounds like we hate this movie, because we've been kind of trashing on it this whole time. But, like... Overall, the movie's fine. Like, there's, there's, there's a lot of good stuff that we haven't talked about, too. Like, the the message of the story, I think, is a pretty cool one, where it's just it's just about coming to terms with death and stuff like that. Yeah. And it does a good job with that, I think. And then, uh, what else does this movie do? There's another thing. Oh, uh, 
like we, like we talked about, it's like a pretty miserable and horrible story. And I think to fully appreciate this movie, you kind of have to be a parent, which we both aren't, or at least I don't think we are. Even a pet owner. Yeah, even even a pet owner. But because uh, a, a big part of it is you know the fear of losing loved ones or losing children and stuff. And from what I've heard, losing a child is like the hardest thing you can go through. But for us that haven't really experienced what it's like to have a family, I mean, besides like our initial family, it's kind of harder. It's harder for us to understand what is so grim about it. So, yeah. Keep that in mind. I mean, that's it's a double edged sword because uh, to fully appreciate it, you have to have kids. But if you have kids, you shouldn't be watching the movie because it'll probably traumatize them. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, there's definitely like a. It's kind of like the main character is stuck in, like, a perpetual state of denial or something. Like, you know how there's, like, the five steps of grief, or five stages of yeah, grief? Yeah, five stages of grief. I forget which one I'm, I'm really thinking of, but he's, like, it's, like it, it's either, like, denial or bartering, cause, or, like, somewhere in between that, because it's, like, he's trying to, like, actually bring them back. But, mm. like, you know, it's not actually going to work. Sometimes dead is better. Yeah, it's, That's like... What... That's the catchphrase in the movie. Yeah, it's like uh, right at the end, like he after he discovers the wife's dead, after he gives his son the old uh, um, lethal injection there, he's like, Carry- I wish my dad gave me drugs. <laughs> I don't think you want those drugs. Yeah, that's probably right. <laughs> but no, so like he, he takes his wife's body and he's like carrying it back and like the ghost of the, um, the college kid's like telling him, no, don't do it. And he's like, no, it'll work. It'll work yeah. this time. Is she... uh, here's, a, here's another complaint about this movie that like the actors are all fine but some of them especially the the main dad whenever there has to be a scene where there's like a lot of emotion yeah. uh, it just comes off pretty awkward and <laughs> this is another one of those scenes the college students like no you can't bro we should just been like dude did you not did you not see the rest of the movie like you don't want to use the pet cemetery but yeah. the dad I couldn't tell if it was supposed to be that the dad has gone insane or if the dad that's the problem when you have like weird ghosts and mystical elements is that you can't tell if the character is going insane yeah. or if that's just what the universe is no i mean he does try to like rationalize it because he's like no it'll work this time she was like uh, uh what's the word he uses but he's like she died she was, like it was a fresher kill yeah because like the kid had already been in the ground for like probably a week or so yeah. spoiler alert when the mom comes back she looks like a freaking zombie and when the kid came back he looked fine yeah i mean they don't actually show her face like when she's like hung by the noose so maybe no. the maybe the kid kind of like nibbled on her eye like he did oh, with yeah, uh maybe. with uh what's his name judd <laughs> zombie mom looks really cool when she comes back oh like, yeah the goo coming out of the eye i was like oh that's pretty cool and like at first i was a little upset because i think that i think it would have been a more powerful ending if it had just ended with him just carrying the body into the pet cemetery and it just ends there like yeah just to show that like he hasn't learned anything yeah but no but, like originally the special effects are cool so yeah like originally it was supposed to end where he was like playing um solitaire like in the kitchen and then the like wife opens the door and then it cuts to black mm-hmm. but i guess they i think they wanted like a more it was probably a test audience uh, they were like wait what happened at the that's what test audiences always do they watch a movie and they just act like really stupid like how, how will people know how the movie ends if we don't see the zombie mom no uh, like when they, they, I think they were gonna like show her like legs as she was like walking it through the door and then cut to black. Mm-hmm. But like, none, yeah. but with the actual ending, like, it's pretty much that that she walks in, you see that she's all zombified, and they start kissing, and she grabs a knife, and right before she like stabs him in the head, it cuts to black and starts playing the Ramones. So it's still it's still a pretty fun ending. Yeah, I just think it could have been more powerful if it had just ended with him just walking into the cemetery. Yeah, pretty much. All right, so um, I kind of hinted at some other things that like didn't really make sense to me. So mm-hmm. um, I kind of want to mention those before um, you know, we end here. Yeah, end it. Okay. Okay. So yeah, you mentioned the maid. Like, I don't know why that was there. Like, her committing suicide because <laughs> mm-hmm. it just kind kind of happens. Uh, 
But then another thing, so there's the subplot with the wife, where she has a sister that's suffering from spinal meningitis. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. That was actually the scariest part of the movie, yeah. I think. So it is kind of creepy, because they, like, they show a couple flashbacks of her having to take care of the, um, mm -hmm. her sister, who's actually played by a guy, like in the film. Oh, I, be I believe that. Because I, I don't think they could find someone gaunt enough <laughs> for the role, so they, they went mm -hmm. with a guy. And, but uh, was that an actual, like, back disorder? I thought it was just, like, a rubber thing he was wearing. Oh, no, 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 no. They, yeah, that was a, that was a, that was probably prosthetics or, uh, oh, okay, like, okay. makeup. But, no, they, they, they chose a guy for the, the role because, I don't mm -hmm. know. It also made it creepier, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But, um, so, yeah, so, like, uh, she looks kind of zombie-ish, or the character mm -hmm. looks kind of zombie-ish. Well, and, what I think it looks like is that she has so much, like, skin makeup on that she looks like a dead body that's been embalmed like yeah you've ever been to like a casket viewing session that's what that's what she looks like a dead body inside there which definitely added to the creepy factor yeah and then like one of the flashbacks is uh like her parents weren't home and she's like choking yeah or something so the, the idea is that the mom had this sister that like the parents just kept like locked up and like hush hush when they should have put her in a hospital yeah and uh she she has like a seizure and dies one day and the mom like feels really bad about it because she feels responsible because she was the one that was taking care of her when it happened yeah and like she was like eight so like yeah like she wasn't in place to do that but uh yeah the, the ghost of her like comes back and you, again i can't tell if it's supposed to be that the mom's going insane or if maybe the sister actually is evil and is like trying to get her revenge or something you know no but, uh, yeah, I'll let you talk. So now, like, I think it was sort of an an attempt to like do like a psychological thing with the mom. Mm -hmm. um, and it but, plays into the theme, so that's why that subplot's in the movie. But go on. Yeah, it plays into the theme, but it like like when they introduce it, it like kind of comes out of nowhere and like feels yeah, like really, really forced. It, it also it also feels like it's the first time the mom has told the dad about this despite yeah. them being married for like <laughs> four or five, six years. Yeah. But again, this is one of those things that probably works really well in the book, but you can't adapt all of that into a movie. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not upset that it's in because it is one of the scarier parts of the movie and it's, it's fun enough, but you're, you're totally right. The fact that I totally forgot about it and I finished the movie today is kind of a testament to how out of place it is. Yeah. It's like maybe if they had like devoted a little bit more time to that, it would actually have made more sense. Or like, mm -hmm. I don't know, because from what I've heard, the movie is pretty faithful to the book, but at the same time, they probably had to cut a lot out. Yeah. Like I mean, like you said, the Windigo character. Like I didn't even know that was a thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I assume there are other details like that. But yeah. Then the next thing. So, when the ghost is guiding the mom back to Maine from Chicago mm -hmm. or wherever the hell her parents are, I can't really tell if, like, she can, like, hear him speak or not. Like, there are a couple scenes, like, where it, yeah, it's, I, like, I very... Yeah, I think she kind of can. I think it's supposed to be, that, like, the ghost is, like, influencing yeah. them. But also, the ghost closes the door on the semi-truck she's in. yeah. So, I don't know how that works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, like, make it very ambiguous, like, in between scenes, mm -hmm. and it, like, seems like the rules change. <laughs> yeah, it seems like the rules change, and it already feels out of place, because it's kind of like this funny, cute little, my best friend's a zombie scenario, like. Yeah. It feels, it has, it feels comedic, is what it feels like, and I didn't need to be there. Especially because the rest of the movie isn't comedic at all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And the other thing that was kind of bothering me, and this isn't really, this really doesn't have anything to do with the plot, but, like, didn't it seem like the daughter have, had, like, a like a really weird accent? Yeah, it kind of did. She was kind of annoying. I was kind of hoping the dad was going to, like, slap her. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like, that really bothered me. It's like, for, like, absolutely no reason. It's like, does she have an accent, or does she not have an accent? It's also, like, does she have The Shining? 
oh yeah because <laughs> she like dreams about like the things happening like the college yeah, she... the college kid like talking to her mm-hmm. and mentions them by name <laughs> yeah so I, I guess yeah I, I know that some people say all the Stephen King books are supposed to be connected I get that the Dark Tower is supposed to do that but I don't really think that Stephen King had all that planned out in the 80s when he wrote the book so yeah who knows? If I ever meet the guy, maybe I'll ask him. Or maybe I'll tell him to get a haircut. One of the two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anything else you want to say? Or? No, that's pretty much it when it comes to the movie. So yeah, it's... I don't think it was that bad. Yeah. Solid 7. It's not the scariest movie I've ever seen. Yeah. But it's not the worst movie I've ever seen either. It's, it is it is scary. But it's... I don't know. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. That's, that's all I can really say. So, yeah, it's like, I don't know if I've been desensitized or just because it was hyped up to me or whatnot. I didn't find it that scary. Mm-hmm. So. It's more disturbing than scary. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you on that. Just with the themes and stuff. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, do you want to give any more Halloween suggestions before we end off the witching season? Oh, yeah. You know, you know us. We're all about the last minute. Mm-hmm. All right. So one thing that I forgot to recommend because it did not fit within like the categories we picked out of stuff is a uh, Resident Evil 2 the board game. <laughs> um this was a Kickstarter that crap when did when did that happen? It happened in like shortly before the the remake of the game came out, but it has like no connection to the remake. It's like based on the classic game. And it's pretty much, you know, recreation of the, uh, like, the story mode from the from that game. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty faithful. The mechanics work sort of like how the game does. Like, it's not always easy to kill the enemies. Um, it's more about, like, it's more objective-based than anything, unless there's, like, a boss where you have to actually, like, eliminate it. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh... It's fun. Um, the unfortunate thing is it's getting scalped pretty badly on uh, <laughs> eBay. If you want to try to get all the expansions that came with it, it's uh, uh, not really easy to do that without spending like a lot of money. Uh, another board game, which I should have mentioned on the last podcast, is uh, Betrayal at Haunted House, or what is it, Betrayal at Hill House? Betrayal at the House on the Hill? Just Betrayal, that's what I call it. Betrayal... Uh, it's a pretty popular game, so I, mean, I think most of you know it. But it is a it's a board game where you're in a haunted house. Everything can happen. It's it's one of those cool board games where as you play, like the board gets bigger and stuff. It's it's fun. I've always had fun playing it, and it's it's Halloween themed too. So yeah, that one's probably a little cheaper than the Resident Evil game. <laughs> oh yeah, it's probably way cheaper. Um, I haven't actually played that yet. I've been meaning to. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's good. And then. Uh, a TV show I probably should have mentioned was The Twilight Zone, because obviously it's The Twilight Zone. <laughs> yeah. Not the movie, though. Not the movie where they killed those Chinese kids. There's a Twilight Zone movie? Yeah, you didn't know. Yeah, it's, a, it's like a controversial movie, because while they were filming it, like a helicopter crashed and like landed on these two kids. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Mm-hmm. Okay. But, yeah, I think the original show is still all on Netflix. Hopefully CBS didn't, like, steal it. Because yeah. nobody has CBS All Access. Come on, like... If you're going to have a bunch of streaming services, just get cable. And nobody wants cable or a bunch of streaming services. <laughs> yeah. Alright, well, I think that closes up. Have a happy Halloween. Thank you so much for listening. We've had We've had a great October on this channel with... A bunch of idiots watching our uh, new demons in Doom Eternal video getting like 100 views a day. So thank you so much for that. I know that only 0.2% of you are subscribed or watching that video. But hey, thanks anyways. Uh, you are supposed to watch that video when it came out. It was, it's, it's not up to date. We hadn't played the expansion when that came out. So so stop watching that video, please. Uh, <laughs> no, don't. It's giving us it's getting us views. What the hell are you talking yeah, I about? That's true. <laughs> yeah, no... Co- if you actually want to know all the demons in the game, though, don't play that because yeah. about 
I don't know, eight minutes into it, it's already obsolete. So <laughs> yeah, just watch our um our uh, all enemies in a Doom Eternal video and see how accurate yeah. that was. <laughs> and I know, I know, I said that the Marauders were going to be fun to fight in that video, and a lot of you said that's not true. But guess what? I've changed my mind. It is fun to fight the Marauders. Bring them on, oh boy. All right. Thank you so much. Have a happy Halloween. We will see you later. Ciao. Bye.